Welcome back to your home for everything local sports. It's JJ. And Mike, and the CIF track highlight is brought to you by Naples Rib Company, the perfect place to cater your team's next event. Big ol' Saturday for Long Beach here at El Camino College for the CIF Southern Section Track and Field Championships. 46 athletes from six different Long Beach schools in action today. A great pop tent crowd on hand. Speaking of pop tents, Athlete Village, our favorite CIF locker room, just like the Olympics. And... We're going to start with the ladies, and just a heads up, as we always do at the beginning of these videos, this will just be the Long Beach schools. That's who we're covering, okay? It's the 4x1, St. Anthony in lane three. They got Asia Atkinson, London Lee, Simone Terry, and Jaina Bell out there. And the Saints had a very strong showing at these CIF finals. They're going to take sixth place in this race with a time of 49.64. So what we're going to do is all the girls' events. Like we said, ladies first. So we go to the Division 1 4x100, Division 4, 3, 2, and 1, all in action today and this one was all poly well as expected obviously uh certainly looking like the state leaders that they are lauren reed handing off to sandrea martin to queen oko to Janae woods two freshmen on this state leading four by one for the jackrabbits which comes out and just cruises to a gold medal with a time of 46 62 you see woods the ninth grader able to just run it home nice and smooth for an easy win for the Jackrabbits to collect their first gold of the day. A lot of freshmen doing big things today, which is crazy how big this day was. It could get better. We go to the D4 100 meter hurdles. Again, it's St. Anthony's sophomore, Asia Atkinson. She was the top qualifier and didn't disappoint. No, she is the rare Division Four athlete who would be just as good in Division One. She's going to take first in 14-18, and you can see she's just cruising. She also won the long jump, so two gold medals individually for this Super Saints sophomore. She did it in about two hours, too, which was crazy. <laughs> to the D1 100-meter hurdles, it's Wilson's Rachel Glenn as a top qualifier, and Jordan's Tia Spears was also in this race finishing ninth, but Glenn wins this one to start her massive day. Yeah, gold medal number one for Golden Glenn who has just been uh, one of the top names in California this year. And we're so excited to see what the next week, couple weeks hold for her. To the 400 meter we go, St. Anthony sophomore Jaina Bell is going to finish in seventh with a 59.08. In D1, the 400 is a real great race for Millican freshman Samaya Monroy. I don't think we've seen the end of her, but she did end up getting caught in this one. Yeah, Samara, obviously one of the best freshmen out there, uh, and she is going to get run down here. Kashaya Peters for Polly, also going to finish ninth. Monroy's second place time was 54.87, and love seeing that Long Beach sportsmanship was on hand all day. She gets a cup of water from Rachel Glenn and a pat on the back. More league power. Massive 100-meter dash for Long Beach Polly. These are the events they're gonna need points out of if they want to win a state championship. Senior Sandrea Martin in lane three, senior Queen Oko in lane five. Martin goes first in 1183, Oko second with a 1206. That is a Jackrabbit gold silver sweep. Sticking with the sprints, it's Polly's Martin and Milliken's Monroy, who we just mentioned. Martin is going to take second here with a 24-2-3. Monroy going to be eight. She was a little bit gassed here, 24-9-8. But both of these runners putting up great days. Yeah, I think Martin really put herself on the map as a senior. He's had a very strong year this season. In the 300 hurdles, one that Polly's Kenya Payne wants back, the USC signee and leader of this team, DQ'd after the false start. There is still a Long Beach runner in this race, and what a runner she is. Rachel Glenn, you've obviously already seen her. You've seen her in plenty of our other videos. She's going to take first in 41-48. And look at the margin of victory as she finishes three and a half seconds faster than second place. If you know track, you know how exhausting that 300-meter hurdles is. But Glenn doesn't have much time to catch her breath. She's got to get back to, yes, that thing you see right there, the high <laughs> jump. So... This isn't going wide receiver to DB, Mike. This isn't football. You got to change your clothes, <laughs> your, your approach, shoes, everything. your approach. You got to take the stickers off. You got to move the scoreboard so you can actually work. We're full service sports writers here at the 562, trying to clear room for these Long Beach athletes so we can shine the spotlight on them. Uh, Rachel Glenn, the day you would expect her to have on the high jump, she clears 5 6 on the first attempt. Uh, and wins, defends her CIF championship. Now she'll try and defend her state championship. Yeah, no time to rest. Rachel, get back at it. It's the 4x4 relay to cap the meet for the girls. First, it's the D4 race for St. Anthony, who was in lane three and ended up taking fourth. Atkinson, Bell, Lee, and Anaya Terry taking fourth in 405.83 to cap a nice day for the Saints with Atkinson moving on to Masters in two events. D1, this is a race for the team championship. Polly and Roosevelt tied for the team lead at 48 points each. Wilson and Milliken also in this one. It was a very even race, but Roosevelt is the best team in the country for a reason. Took a lead on the first baton pass and did not look back. 
although Polly and Wilson were both able to nibble at that lead. Uh, Rachel Glenn running a tremendous leg for Wilson, fastest split of the day. Uh, yeah, but- Polly took the lead first behind Roosevelt in front of Wilson. And then here you see Rachel Glenn taking the lead right back. It was Millick and Polly Wilson kind of circling each other in the blender. <laughs> For sure. Uh, Roosevelt wins it and wins the Team CIF Championship. Polly is going to finish in second with a 347.74, just edging Wilson at 347.99. Milliken took ninth with a four minutes flat. Uh, I love ending these race, these meets on the 4x4 because it just showcases the depth and quality of these Long Beach teams. Jackrabbits are the runner-ups by two points. They do still have a good shot at the state championship, so lots more to hear from all of these girls. You know what? Let's go to the field events for like an intermission between the girls and the boys. And we had some great throwers in action here. In the discus, Emotep Pryor took sixth on the boys' side. And on the girls' side, Lakewood's Cherish Washington qualified for Masters in the discus. She also qualified for Masters in the shot put. Yeah, a Washington second in the shot put. Uh, she had a day to cherish for sure. Polly sophomore Destiny Oko took fifth in the shot put and also qualified for Masters. I don't think a lot of people had that marked up. It was a big day for the Oko sisters. Let's sizzle the pits as the Long Beach jumpers join the fray. It's Polly's queen Oko and Polly freshman Lauren Reed in the long jump. Yeah, Lolo went long in this one. Uh, Queen, though, took third, 18-3. St. Anthony's Atkinson won the D4 long jump, and the, her teammate, London Lee, was competing in the triple jump. A lot of jumpers, <laughs> obviously, out of Long Beach. A lot of young jumpers as well. On the boys' side, we've got a sophomore. It's Long Beach Polly's Miguel Orozco. He's going to take six with a jump over 21 feet, and he just missed Masters by being an alternate. We go to the high jump where Milliken senior Alan Tabales took fifth with a six foot four clearance. He is going to Masters to join Monroy, a pair of Rams, as well as two entries from Lakewood and the two entries from St. Anthony that we mentioned. Now for something completely different. We did not feature a ton of pole vaulting highlights, JJ. But St. Anthony Jr. Ronald Squire, the best squire this size of this side of Podrick, is uh, gonna get over 11 feet and take fifth in this competition. Way to go, Ronnie. So we go to the running events on the boys' side. Obviously, we're going to start things off with the 4x100 Long Beach Poly v. State leader, as they have been all year, and they actually bettered their time today. I believe they're still the only team to go under 41, and it's going to be D'Angelo Chester to Kenyon Reed to Anthony Johnson to Keon Markham. Not their starting lineup that they anticipated having this year due to a hamstring injury to Key Juan Markham, but Key on Markham obviously looking very good on the anchor leg. And we had five of the top nine times in the state of California in this race, so to see Polly win it this comfortably is a big deal. But even with that, Polly came into this meet a well favored team. I mean, what was it? It's like 60 points they were expected to win by? They're expected to win uh, very comfortably, and that was indeed, spoiler alert, how it would play out. We go to the 110 hurdles. That's also all poly. Senior Liam Anderson is going to take the gold in this with a time of 14.39. Big deal for this guy who did not make it out of CIF prelims last year and is able to take home a couple of nice medals today. St. Anthony Jr. Devontae Pollard was in lane three for the D4 400, and he ended up taking fourth with the time under 51 seconds. In the D1 400, it was Polly's Everett Stewart and Milliken Sr. Ahmad Martin. Both those guys in action. Stewart is going to run a fourth place, 47.99. Martin would finish ninth in 49.54. Stewart is on to Masters, which is big for Polly's chances in the next couple weeks. But we go to the sprints with Kenyon Reed and Anthony Johnson, both in the 100 dash for Polly. Reed is going to take second in 10.68, while Johnson finished fourth in 10.74. And once again, both of them are moving on to Masters, which is super important for their chances in Fresno. Yeah, their chances in Fresno are great because having multiple runners in races. Speaking of multiple runners and races, Boys D1 800 features a pair of Bruins. Yeah, Armando Bryson and Jesus Nickel, uh, the football player who has become an 800 runner. You do not see that very often. Bryson took an early lead but finishes fourth in 152.98. Nickel took seventh, but they are both going to Masters. To the D1 300 meter hurdles, and there goes Upland's Caleb Robertson. Oh my goodness, that kid's fast. He's going to run past Polly's Liam Anderson, who takes fourth. Robertson, 36-35. Boys D1 200 meter featured three track rabbits as Johnson, Reed, and the senior D'Angelo Chester are taking on all comers. And uh, in the Long Long Beach versus everybody tabulation, it's going pretty well for Long Beach. As you see, Reed is going to overtake his teammate down the back stretch. And Polly ends up going 1-3-5 with Reed winning it in 21-52, Chester third in 21-58, and Johnson fifth in 22-04. Reed and Chester are both moving on to Masters. 
Pauly's Wolf Frankenfeld didn't win the 3200 meter, but he ran a great race, Mike, and he led that chase pack. He's having an incredible senior year, maybe the best senior year of anyone in Long Beach uh, when you factor in what he did in cross country. He's running sick today and still finishes second in 9-11-33. Last but not least, Long Beach on center stage for the 4x4. It's Polly with Chester, Anderson, Holland, Stewart, and Wilson's Richard, Wyman, Cardoza, and Bryson. Top two in the state, but Upland had a plan to kind of upset that storybook ending for us. Not the best start for the Long Beach team, so they kind of started from behind, but they were right there with Upland pretty much the whole way. It was a tight race between the three teams and it makes you think how incredible a state race would be because it would be the last event of the entire track season. It could be these three squads going at it like this. Hope everyone gets through Masters smoothly because yes, I'm already excited to close out the state meet with three these three teams going. Upland joins Polly and Wilson in the under 314 club, wins it in 313.95. Polly takes second, Wilson third, and that's going to give the Jackrabbits their first CIF team championship for the boys since 2007, the 122nd championship for the school as a whole. And yeah, it was a pretty special day for Long Beach. So hard to be a rabbit for all of your local sports coverage. You got to keep it right here at the 562.org.